Hey guys, yo, what is up and welcome to Jump Inside Unleashed, a series where we talk about six different things of interest that we like within a video game, or sometimes there's things that we don't like, but we're going to bring them all up in this Unleashed episode. Today, we're going to play Atomic Heart, and as much as it sounds weird as a title, it's a very interesting and quite weird game to say the least. Welcome, Comrade Major. Today is a joyful occasion. Yes, it's a game set in the future, and we're just going to get down to that in just a second. But before we do, welcome to the video. Let's get started. Okay, so in Unleashed, we cover around six different things going on in the video game, but we also focus on doing the first two hours of the video game so you get a nice lowdown of everything that's going on. So let's get started. So this game is set in an alternate reality where everything's very much upgraded way past where everything should be. The problem with having everything so far advanced is everything can go wrong, which is kind of what this game explores. But without going far into that, you'll notice as this game introduces you to the world of how technically advanced the game actually is. First, it shows you a lot of this. Talk about style. Science is power, I tell you. The boss has a way of looking down on insurmountable obstacles. I really respect that. There are no obstacles science cannot surmount. Other than an electronic glove. And then a bit of this. Please secure your seatbelt. We and then finally, it shows you this. I mean, when I saw this and I was like, okay, I see what they're doing here. They're trying to say how far, where the technology is and you get the pretty much the lowdown of the story. But when things start going wrong, that's when things get interesting. Major, the Trove is initiating combat maneuvers. Initiating what? For real? Watch out! What am I supposed to do about your it? Safety. What the? Please do not unfasten your seatbelt until the... So yes, that is the alternate reality that this game is set in, and I think it's absolutely beautiful of how they introduce that. That is a good thumbs up. I like that part. That is great. We're going to move on to the next segment, which, of course, is weapons and upgrades. And the weapons and upgrades in this game are very interesting. I used this axe for the majority of my playthrough there are guns there's a seems to be what a shotgun in this game but i really didn't use that that much i just focused on using my axe for the majority of this game and i think that you probably when stepping into this game you probably will as well it's really nice to swing and the upgrade system was a bit weird charles what's on the other side of the door that's nora's voice she's very dangerous what the fuck? Fuck me! Oh, what a stun! I can't get enough jumps. Let me tie you to the bed, baby. No need to fight back, sugar. Yes, of course, if there's this fridge that upgrades and it does, it's, it's, it's a very weird upgrade machine because it talks to you as well, which is creepy and I want to not be in that same room as the upgrade. But then again, I do want to upgrade my weapons, so I was very much interested to see how the upgrading worked in this game and it was actually pretty easy to understand. You select your weapon and you pretty much just put whatever upgrade you want on the weapon. You were fortunate enough to acquire about 50 grams of neuropolymer. I suggest exchanging this dose with lovely Nora for a new skill. You don't mind, do you? Now let me show you what I can do. Professionally, I mean. I've seen it. Literally. Crispy critters. I am here to help you upgrade your red hot pocket rockets. And believe me, handsome, you can upgrade whatever tickles your fancy. Weapons are useful. But I can do so much more. A quick romp with your axe is just a taste of things to come, you handsome beast. And yeah, it's basically that simple. You just pick and choose what you want to upgrade. And it's really simple. I absolutely love the whole weapon upgrade segment. It, I, I, it's really good. It's beautiful, it's really easy to understand, and yeah, you just collect material and upgrade, which is what introduces me to my next segment, which is 
interacting with the environment of this game. Just turn the handle and open the door! Yes, in different parts of this game, you'll be able to pick up stuff and move stuff around the world, but mostly you'll also be collecting material. And trust me, you'll want to do this as much as possible. When you walk into a room, you've got a scanning device that you can turn on and view the world around you. After you've done that, you want to go over to literally anything that glows blue and just open up all the cupboards. Each cupboard will gain you some type of material if you've got anything inside those cupboards and you can just do that to the whole room. If it glows a particular that particular color, you can just go over to it and just take everything from that room. And honestly, I spent lots of the game time actually doing this, so yeah, I think that's probably my one downfall of this whole thing is the amount of time that you'll be having to look through different rooms, un you know, go through different cupboards and all that, just trying to get as much material as possible. It makes you stronger in the long run, which is absolutely amazing. It's an upgrade system. Of course it does. You have to search for stuff and then you get to use that stuff to actually upgrade the game. But it does take up a lot of time to do so, and it sometimes it just gets a bit boring doing all of that. I mean, I, I was there for ages just trying to look through different crates and all that kind of stuff, and it just, I, I, I just feel like, uh, did I, you know, is there an easier way to do it? Probably, probably. But, you know, I didn't think it was bad. I think there's a worse, but, you know, it just takes time. Anyway, the next part, and this is another downfall of my opinion, this game, for me, when I saw the cover of this and I saw kind of the trailer for what this was, I was hoping it was going to be very, very horror-like and things were going to jump scare me in the middle of this game, and I, I didn't experience a single jump scare. This game wasn't horror for me at all. It was futuristic. It was like the dangers of what, this fu what the future could hold, but it was never a, a part of where I would be like, oh yeah, um, this is a really scary game because guess what? It wasn't. I didn't get scared at all. All the robots have been carrying out their normal operations until they suddenly became hostile. What the hell are I you slip. doing, you lousy bot? Get your rusty metal asses out of here! That was really very rude of them. It's it it's that simple. I didn't get scared of this game whatsoever. This game is not as horror as I'd have liked to imagine. It it's very it's a very friendly introduction to the world, and I I I, I, I did like it. It was good. It was fun to explore, and it was loads of stuff to explore. But it never really gave me a, any horror that I wanted to experience and I thought this game could do a lot more if this was a bit more on the horror side of things it made me just it, it made me feel more weird of this is a weird world to step into rather than a horror world so yeah it, it's not a bad world it just didn't give me what I expected so you know kind of half pointing on that one but you know it's not bad it's a really good game to get into. Don't let that put it down, but that's a mark off my list because I it's it's it was kind of advertising and it really didn't deliver towards me personally. But yeah. anyway, there you go. And we'll move on to the next segment, which is um, the robots in this game. Now, this game's very heavily on robots, as you can see. And of course, the robots, obviously, you know, everything goes wrong. The robots start attacking you and they just want to absolutely destroy you. So you'll be going up against different robots, uh, different levels of robots. Get out! Larissa! No! And you'll be having to get from next area to next area battling robots. So there's a lot of robots in this game. And to be fair, I think they've done the robots really well. They're very interesting. Um, they had me like looking at them twice at the beginning going, is this a human or is this a robot? But then I very easily and quickly uh, came into the fact that pretty much everything on this thing 
is mostly a robot. Um, there's not a lot of human interaction in this game. There's a little bit of it, but there's not that much. And a lot of the human interaction is in cutscenes. So you're going to be mostly with robots for most of the actual gameplay. <laughs> 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 What are you gawking at? Almost choked to death there. Give me a hand. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Mm. Oh. You should be more careful. So if you were thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be a nice, fun little, you know, I'm going to have companions. No companion. Well, you've got a, a hand companion where you have this uh, this talking thing um, uh, that you get to conversate with. There's no other way forward. We have to take it. Take it where? Petrov escaped while working in Vavilov's cold workshop. It would be logical to begin our search there. So, how do I get there? First, we need to get to the distribution center. Uh, other than that, there's not really, you know, there's no human, major human companion in this game that you'll, you know, that you'll be able to talk to for any point in this game. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's kind of the robots and the fighting. And to be fair, the fighting was also quite fun. It was nice to whack a robot quite a few times in this game. I very much enjoyed every time I got into a robot battle fight. So the fighting was actually quite fun. It got a bit repetitive, but it, it was it was mostly I enjoyed the combat. It was a good combat game. It's nothing majorly special, but it was it was a, it was good. It was alright. <laughs> Finally, the last bit of this game, the bit that really, really, uh, that is going to turn you either on or off about this game, and it's puzzles. Yes, not to, you know, put it lightly, this game has puzzles in it. Um, one of them that you'll come across really early is a door lock puzzle where you'll have to uh, push loads of, of these spikes in towards the door lock, and when they've all gone in, um, then the door will unlock, but you have to time it correctly every time a light shows on one of the lock sections. I What's that freaky thing on the door? A lock. Are you serious? Then open it already. Come on, we're in a hurry. I'm unable to assist you. I lack any kind of lock picking functionality. You'll have to find your own method for picking locks. I'm sure you're smart enough. Yeah, right. In other words, you're basically useless, as always. Try snapping your fingers at the exact moment the locking pin light goes on. And you'll come up different puzzles as this game goes by and the, the game continues because, uh, like, some, for example, might be, like, twisting something or... Uh, or finding something and inserting something. But, the, you know, this game's got a few puzzles in it. I wouldn't say it's majorly got loads and loads and loads of puzzles, but it's got some puzzles in there. Sometimes it's even a puzzle just to work out how to get from platform A to platform B. So, uh, you know, you know, there are different things in this game. Um, and I, you know what, I want to put underneath this segment as well, even though it's not really, but I'll just include an extra fact, the water and swimming mechanics in this game, because it does have water I want to include, but the water isn't like your natural water, it's like jello water, you'll see um, jello floating around, you'll be able to go into it, and you'll be able to swim through it, and it's a very weird experience. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, other than uh, jello water and puzzles, that it's 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 a pretty fun experience with the puzzles. I quite enjoyed it. They were quite unique. You didn't unlock the door the same way twice, so it was well, you know, it it, it was interesting the way the game presented itself. You know what? This game was actually pretty good in a way, considering on Xbox this game is free. I'm going to give you the game prices, they'll be on the screen right now. So if you are interested in picking this up, you are more than welcome to. Uh, but if you're on Xbox and you've got Game Pass, it's pretty much free on Game Pass, so I take it full advantage if you're interested in this type of stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting game. It's not game of the year, the best game ever kind of situation for me, but it does come under, a, it's a very good game, 
and uh, it's it's enjoyable somewhat. Assuming that this is free on Game Pass at the time I'm doing this video, you know, it's 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 something to enjoy yourself with. If you have no idea what to play, I'd say, you know, give it a go. It's not going to be incredibly hard. If you can work out the puzzle segments, you're going to be able to play this game very easily. Just remember to pick up as much material as possible and you'll be pretty good playing this game, really. Um, I played this on the lowest difficulty settings. There is three difficulty settings in this game. So, you know, um, choose your difficulty settings the way you want to play them. And yeah, it's a good game. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video and you found it informative, then please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys on another Jump Inside video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.